Waterford. Live from Waterford and on Garvin, this is Waterford at One. Good afternoon, I'm Julie Smith. Today's top stories. The cervical check report is expected to find thousands of screening tests were sent to US, US labs not inspected by the HSE. The jurors in the Anna Kriagel trial have been warned not to speculate, guess or make up theories in relation to the case. A memo recommending funding for Waterford airports expected before the Cabinet shortly. And in sport, Waterford's Brian O'Halloran has retired from inter-county hurling. A report into the cervical check controversy is expected to find thousands of screening tests were sent without the HSE's knowledge to US labs that it hadn't inspected. Dr Gabriel Scali's report, which will be published this afternoon, will show how many of the over 300,000 slides were outsourced to facilities in places like Las Vegas and Honolulu. He previously found the Texas-based lab, CPL, which carried out cervical check testing, ended up transferring screening tests to other centres. Fianna Fáil's health spokesman Stephen Donnelly says today's report will leave families with further questions. Dr Scully came back last year and he said the main labs, they were all working to the best international standards. And he went further and said he would have no issue with, with recommending that those labs continue to do the work. So there are some very real questions and concerns that the women and their families will have around this second group of five labs. Were they up to best international standards? The jurors in the Anna Kriagel trial have been warned not to speculate, guess or make up theories in relation to the case. The judge is addressing them for a final time before they're asked to consider whether two teenage boys murdered the schoolgirl. Our courts correspondent Frank Graney has this report, which some listeners may find distressing. Mr Justice Paul McDermott told the jurors they should consider the case against boy A first before moving on to his co-accused boy B. Both boys deny murdering Anna Kriagel but the prosecution's case in relation to their alleged roles is very different. Boy A is accused of violently sexually assaulting and murdering her in a derelict farmhouse in Lucan just over a year ago while boy B is accused of assisting by luring her from her home in Leakslip knowing what was to happen. The judge told the jurors mere presence at a crime scene is not a criminal offence but it's different if someone's found to have done something Preparatory. That's an act of participation, he said. In relation to Boy B, he told them they'd to consider his state of mind when he called for Anna that day and brought her to the abandoned house. He told them they must acquit if they've any reasonable doubt that he'd prior knowledge as contended by the prosecution. Frank Graney of the Central Criminal Court. The Criminal Assets Bureau has raided the house of a man with suspected links to the Hutch crime gang. The searches took place in the Coolock area of North Dublin this morning. A Volkswagen car and a Rolex watch were two of a number of items seized in the searches. Gardaí described this morning's searches as significant and a second search operation was carried out at a professional office in the capital. Guardian investigating a murder in Dublin city centre last night have arrested a man in his 20s. A 28-year-old man was stabbed to death on O'Connell Street shortly before 2am. The man who has been arrested in connection with the incident has been taken to hospital for treatment. The government has been accused of making parts of the budget up as it goes along. It's after the Fiscal Advisory Council said there's no credible medium-term plan for the economy. It also said the government shouldn't rely on unsteady corporation tax receipts to increase spending in the budget. Fianna Fáil's finance spokesman Michael McGrath believes the government needs a tighter handle on spending. It's kind of make it up as you go along. Uh, the budgeting on health is haphazard uh, and then year in year out we end up with very large supplementary estimates that have to be found and a lot of the Fiscal Council's criticism uh, in relation to spending is about the within year drift and the increases in spending that occur which are never announced on budget day. Waterford Junior Minister John Halligan says the memo recommending funding for Waterford Airport should be before the Cabinet shortly. The Minister for Transport signed off on the memo seeking approval of €5 million Euro in funding for a runway extension. €7 million Euro in funding has already been pledged by private investors and local authorities in the South East. It's nearly three years since the last commercial flight took off from Waterford. John Halligan says there's been a delay because the government is busy dealing with Brexit. Uh, there's a memo being brought to Cabinet in the next... Unfortunately, it was to be brought last week, but was, Brexit has absolutely taken over everything, everything in Cabinet. There was 13 memos on Brexit. Uh, I actually brought one last memo at, to Cabinet last week. So we're hoping that it possibly will be brought to Cabinet, but it's on its way to Cabinet very shortly. 
Newly elected Metropolitan Mayor of Waterford, Breda Brennan, says she wants to put young people front and centre in her year as mayor. The Kilcone based councillor was backed by members of the Progressive Alliance, including the Greens, Labour and Four Independents. She saw off competition from Fine Gael's Lola O'Sullivan, who had the backing of Fianna Fáil. Party colleague Jim Griffin will be her deputy for the coming 12 months. Breda says she'll be extending an invite to students who took part in recent climate strikes to address the council. We've seen how uh, previously the youth have led campaigns like Repeal the Eighth and Marriage Equality. If it's an issue that they're interested in, they have no problem coming out, um, walking the streets and putting their vote where it counts. So, yeah, I would definitely be interested in that. I mean, climate change is going to affect everybody eventually. It mightn't affect us here today, but it will probably affect our granddaughters and grandsons Meanwhile, Waterford Council CEO Michael Walsh says there's a lot for the new council to tackle over the next six months. We have a new council, uh, another five-year term, uh, and that's an opportunity in many respects because we've got a few things to to do. We'll be having a look again at our corporate plan, for example, that goes in the cycle and equally the development plan will be up for review next year. Uh, so there's a big body of work to be done there. Uh, it's exciting in the context. There's a good deal of change, but look, that's that happens nearly every every election, and uh, it's an opportunity for some new people to contribute. The EU says the election of a new British Prime Minister doesn't change anything with Brexit. Many of the 10 contenders claim they'd go back to Brussels to renegotiate, but a spokesman for the European Commission says parameters won't change with a new leader. The Vatican's new guidance on gender identity has been described as unhelpful and inflammatory. The document calls for dialogue on the issue but says the idea of people choosing to change their gender was an attempt to annihilate nature. The statement has been widely criticised with claims it will contribute to bigotry and violence against LGBT people. The Transgender Equality Network says the Vatican is ignoring the real and legitimate experiences of young people who are trans. It said it was also disappointed with the tone and timing of the document during Pride Month. WLR Sport. Thanks to Boland's High and Die Waterford. Preview the award winning 192 High and Die range. See Boland's.com. Starting with Gaelic Games and the Waterford County Board held its June meeting last night in Dongarvan. County Board Chairman Paddy Joe Ryan told the meeting that he saw no signs of unrest in the Waterford hurling camp during the Munster Championship. I, I didn't see any unrest in the camp. I was at all the matches, I was there pre-match, after match, I certainly didn't see any unrest. I uh, see people all, I mean, if we were to believe all the rumours we heard on the street about this, that and the other, it's unreal, you know. It's very disappointing that people see fit to go on social media and condemn and actually try and ridicule people who are giving their livelihood to this association for absolutely zilch. Separately, Waterford's Brian O'Halloran has retired from inter-county hurling. The 28-year-old spent a decade on the Dacia panel, winning a Munster title in 2010 and the National Hurling League in 2015. He was one of the Dacia's point scorers in the 2017 All-Ireland final against Galway. You know, it was a disappointing day, but um, I suppose when you get to play in an Ireland final and to score, and it is, um, you know, it is something you dream of when you're younger and stuff like that. And it was obviously a very disappointing day on a lot of levels, but... It was, a, it was a special day then, I suppose, reflecting back. O'Halloran started in Waterford's defeat to Cork last weekend, where their championship campaign came to an end. Brian says he's retiring now purely for personal reasons. Um, I just feel that I have enough time. Um, kind of, my time is done really more than anything. Um, it's my, my, my tenth year down in there since I was a child, basically. And I just kind of want to do a few different things uh, in my life now. Um, there's no... There's no big reason behind it. I kind of decided maybe around Christmas time or shortly after that it probably wouldn't mind last year. And um, I kind of kind of sticking with it now, to be honest. No, it's not. No, it's nothing at all to do with management or unrest or anything like that. No, it's a total personal decision based on just my 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 career and my life. That's that's the only thing behind it. To soccer now, and it was a case of job done for Republic of Ireland manager Mick McCarthy following their two 0 win against Gibraltar in their Euro 2020 qualifier last night. Robbie Brady scored a late header to add to a first-half own goal to extend their lead to five points at the top of Group D. But McCarthy admits it wasn't their best performance. We've played better against Georgia. We've played get better against Denmark. We've had two horrible games a bit against Gibraltar, but we've dispatched them both. And as far as I'm concerned, we've beaten them both. So six points from the two games. 
Northern Ireland will look to make history in their Euro qualifier in Belarus this evening. Victory would make it four wins in a row for Michael O'Neill's side. They go into the game on top of Group C, three points clear of Germany. Wales will hope to get their campaign back on track following defeat to Croatia when they play Hungary away. Scotland take on the world's number one team, Belgium. There's some big teams in action as the Women's World Cup continues in France today. European champions the Netherlands take on New Zealand this afternoon while title holders the USA get going against Thailand tonight. Chile play Sweden. And the Waterford FC manager says it appears that a minor tournament in Toulon is more important than the league. The Blues have to go an entire ma- entire month without a league game because Ireland's under-21s are in action in the competition. The fact that Zach Elbazudi has had to return to Ireland with what appears to be a serious shoulder injury has added to his worries ahead of the league game against Bohemians on the 28th of June and Dundalk on the 1st of July. Alan Reynolds is extremely critical of the Toulon tournament. Look, it's like the league has ended there. You know, no game for a month. That's not right. Um, for the tournament that they want to enter the 21s into. Um, and I'm looking at the facilities that they're playing in the under-21s. And uh, I'm going, like, why should our league suffer because of a tournament? It's not that big of a tournament. If it was the European Championships under-21s or, or senior internationals, obviously you'd call things off if you had players in it. But not for that tournament. Finally, in rugby, Warren Gatland looks set to be named the Lions head coach for the 2021 Tour of South Africa. Gatland's set to step down as Wales boss after the World Cup later this year and has reportedly reached a verbal agreement to coach the Lions for a third successive time. The former Ireland head coach guided the Lions to victory in Australia in 2013 and a drawn series against New Zealand two years ago. Sports News on WLR brought to you by Boland's Waterford.